Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Firm. I'm here with Lance Gore. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> We're Hell married. Yeah. We're married. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Inside the Firm. I'm here with Lance Psycho and I'm Alex Gore. We have a great episode for you today. We're going to talk about housing, the Fed, and maybe even something else. Who knows where the show will take you, but it will take you to the moon if you go to RevitRocketShip.com. Get yourself and your firm ro- working and rowing in the same direction so you can be efficient. Do the designs that you need. Do the designs that the clients want and help your firm out, RevitRocketShip.com. Can't find the product data you're looking for? You might be using the wrong search engine. Broad searches result in consumer products, out-of-date information, and websites that hide or don't have the information you're looking for. If you need specifications, CAD or BIM, RCAT.com is your search engine. Find and download the up-to-date data you need fast. RCAT.com is free and requires no registration, so try RCAT today. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com. All right. So, Lance, I want to show you something here yeah. real quick. Okay. What do we got? And you you can destru- describe it as we go. Make sure my volume's off. All right, ready? What it, it's it's U.S. US national median rent versus annual ho- household income. It's a graph on the left hand side. We've got uh, it goes from zero to like seven percent. Oh, okay. So it's uh the percentage of the rent versus income. Got it. And it goes from eighty five, nineteen eighty five to nineteen eighty seven. But I, 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 the graph's gonna extend. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Yep, yep. So, so back in the day, it looks like it used to be uh, rent price was about, let's just say, when me and Al move your cursor oh, there, oh, 80, 87. 87, It's like six percent, eight percent for rent uh, versus your income and then household income. Yep. So, so in 1985, it, it, they're oh, the both at price. zero. Got it. So it's like from 1985 to 1987, how much did your rent increase? 7% in two years. How much did your household income increase? Mm. 4%. So there's a 3% gap there. That's all it's saying. Yeah. And also I'm going to hit play and it's going and all of a sudden we're in the 90s and your housing went up by 200%. Your income went up by 7%. <laughs> It's just crazy. Then we're in 95 and your housing is up. Oh, sorry. 20%. Your income is up at 7% again. Oh, the dot-com bubble. Okay. Yep. We're in 2000s. Now your uh, rent is up 55% and your income was only up 10% from 1985. Holy cow. We're in 2011. Housing rent is up 100%. Your income is only up. Again, just flatlining. It's just flatlining. It's just, yeah. yeah yep. So, medium rent keeps going uh, it started up. started going up a little bit more in yeah. the 2000, oh. late 2000s, and then plateaus again. Around 160. Yep. And then uh, your, here we go. Oh, this isn't bad. Income goes up, let's just say 38%. We're taking a guess. From 2013 to 2020, call it. Uh, yep. And then rent is 150 150 wow yeah so lance does that lead to anything that you want to talk about it does as a matter of fact yeah give me the uh give me the thing al please Mm -hmm. so uh we've been talking about this for a while but this the article finally came out that i was looking for and it's uh from the colorado newsline.com never even heard of these guys but thank you for publishing this mr brian j Connolly. Long time, first time listener. <laughs> uh, the title is Colorado takes a new and likely more effective approach to the housing crisis. New t- and, and so part of that graph, right, is like, okay, rent. If you're just renting, you're just paying somebody else's mortgage. You're just, you're putting money in their pocket. You are not gaining the basic fundamental part of American wealth, which is owning property. Cause Equity. We have, yep, because we have property rights here still somehow. Uh, so... We need to find ways to get people 
into that, right? So we need to find ways that they can attain entry-level housing opportunities, right? And I think Colorado's moving in the right direction, even though it's a very, this is a draconian kind of approach because it's very top-down. But you know what? Sometimes you got to do that. Like, I'm kind of convinced that sometimes you got to do that. Uh, so the article goes on to start here. In recent years, Colorado has been a poster child for the U.S. housing crisis, previously a relatively affordable state. It has seen some prices increase nearly six-fold over the past three decades, outstripping even Florida and California. I was just telling you this before we started on the show. Yeah. Once a uh, problem confined to coastal cities, unaffordable housing has increasingly become an issue in the nation's heartland. Like elsewhere, there's no single reason why real estate has become so expensive in Colorado. Yes, there is. Come well, on. That was... What are you doing, Mr. Journalist? Well, this... Okay. I will move... I'll just move on. Sorry, but you peaked, you peaked the autism in uh, me right that, now. <laughs> Instead, there are several. Demand is rising among millennials and seniors are remaining in their houses longer. Investors are buying up second homes, short-term rentals, and housing construction has failed to keep up. Then there are supply, plain, supply chain disruptions and labor shortage. The result? Colorado has been experiencing declining population growth. Increasingly homeless and hiring challenges for employers, but new legislation may challenge that. Al, did you want to interject? Um, population, wait, wait, declining? declining? No, no, it started to decline. Yes, we are finally seeing like some leveling out of. We had the green rush. Uh, click on that; it'll open up a new link. Just so Which people, one? Uh, the population decline. Yep. Color Go down. Is Scroll down, scroll down. You got a chart? <laughs> yeah. You want this? Yep. So this yeah, is Colorado wow, wow. international migration, domestic ni migration. Yeah. So we got a graph oh. up here. And uh, let's see. In 20, just, I'll just call do the peak. In 2015, Colorado had uh, domestic migration into, this, into the state of 56,554. And then we had international immigration, 13,122. And then it's been a steady decline since 2015 to about 2020. And now we're kind of leveling off. But the 2020, there was a, a sharp decline. Yeah. And I bet you it's because of two things. One, people stopped moving during COVID. And then two, I think when people, because the mass exodus was from California and New York. And normally we get a lot of people from California, some from Chicago, and then from Texas. I think the people who decided to move from California literally had that hard choice force upon them. And they thought, okay, I'm leaving California for multiple different reasons, not only fires and all this other stuff, but because of the Jacronian crazy bureaucratic measures. Sure. And they're like, oh, do I go to Colorado, which is California light, or do I go to Texas or Florida? And they're like, I know, I know how crazy it can get. And this is meaning like literally just lockdowns for a very very long time why would i just go to the light version of this which is true yeah yeah which is true uh okay uh, this year the colorado's general assembly passed several laws by the way this this article is only six days old it's from we're recording this on may 31st uh it was may 25th so i just wanted it finally came out uh several laws that from my perspective as a re as an expert on real estate and land use will make colorado a national leader in expanding housing affordability on May 13th, 2024, Colorado Governor Jared, po Jared Polis signed a bill requiring local governments to plan and zone far for more apartments and condominiums near transit stations. On the same day, a governor signed a law allowing accessory dwelling units, small apartments located on the same lot as a single-family house to be constructed in large cities and towns. This, these bills followed others that eliminated minimum vehicle parking requirements for apartments and preempted local rules prohibiting people from living with roommates, these changes will make housing more affordable by allowing developers to build more and more diverse housing at a lower cost. Even more legislation, including a bill that would give local governments a right to purchase existing homes in order to preserve affordability, will soon reach governor's desk. Each of these actions aims to hold down housing costs for developers and home seekers. Rest uh, restricting new housing causes problems. To end the housing crisis, governments need to get rid of rules that prevent developers from building new homes. For decades, economists have observed that restrictive zoning laws in some of the nation's wealthiest cities are facing major blocking new development. Under the law of supply and demand, limiting housing supply increases housing prices. Shocking. That doesn't just mean it's hard to buy a, a home in Boulder or Vail. Aff unaffordable housing in prosperous U.S. cities has far-reaching effects and increases the household wage household wealth gap. 
between existing higher income owners and renters. It reduces workforce dynamism as workers can't afford to move to places where they might find better paying, more productive jobs. This in turn hurts national economic growth, unaffordable housing, also aggregates racial inequality and accelerates gentrification and displacement in lower income neighborhoods. The housing affordability crisis even makes I actually was hoping they would get to this point. Makes climate change worse. As people seeking cheaper housing farther away from employment centers, their commutes produce more greenhouse gas emissions. Which is actually which is unequivocally true in terms of like, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna drive more, there's gonna be more mm-hmm. air pollution. And it's real visible in Colorado because we, we have a uh, San Francisco and an LA effect where the uh, a cold front or a, uh, a, a, a I think a warm front com- if a warm front comes in, then it pushes all the pollution down so like some days you'll just you can't even see denver it's just like a very thick smog we have smog issues here for sure so that's real um yeah al electrical vehicles and thorium nuclear reactors would be awesome um i you know what i'm gonna couple this lance i'm gonna couple this with an with an article okay yeah so but i but i go so while i'll get that ready my 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 my, so you gotta be (coughs) If you're running a business, guys, gals, architecture, construction, you got to be paying attention to what's coming down the pipeline. Even if you don't agree with draconian policies, you just got to ride the wave. Like, why not capitalize on the, 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 the whole thing that's going on, right? So set yourself up to maybe take advantage of stuff like this. If, if ADUs are going to be a huge new thing in Colorado, then maybe you should be working with you know your web copy people, uh, advertisers, however you get your the word out there, calling up general contractors, networking, and going let's uh, let's just lean into some ADUs because I get you know what's that you know what's dead the big huge projects the big huge projects that just does, that don't pencil out anymore because of the high inflation and the interest rates. So um, you gotta gotta be nimble. We are reading as a firm the pattern language, and they keep talking about cottages for teenagers, which I still think is kind of crazy, but then cottages for old folks. Um, and then workshops and stuff like that. And it just, it's just straight in line with allowing ADUs and allowing people to build ADUs and allowing them to use their backyards in that space. Anyways, Ooh. Longmont to do away with Ooh, parking minimum. This is new, Al. Minimum. Longmont is the first city in Colorado to do with oh, away with parking minimums for new buildings. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I've seen that before in other cities, but maybe it was just the just, just the zone that it was. Now, that's a pretty bold statement because I feel like Minneapolis is usually the leader in almost all of the zoning stuff like this. Yeah, but it says in Colorado. Oh, okay. Colorado. Yep, then it's true. Then it's actually true because Denver, Denver didn't get it right away with it. Keep going. Uh, but Boulder, there's some zones that have this. They have maximums, not minimums. Now, new buildings won't be required to have a certain number of parking spaces, only what the building om- owner deems necessary. Uh, city council swapped out parking minimums in favor of maximums. Um, which vary depending on the billing type and number of units. And then it links back to what Lance was just talking about. Aha! Uh-huh. Advocates uh, say this will help cut down on emissions, encourage public transportation, help reduce housing costs, and support economic development. Those against the measure are worried about the unintended consequences of limited parking. We have no choice. We have no choice than to get more dense. And uh, uh, maybe you can... Can I switch back? Yeah. Okay, you switch me back now. Uh, because uh, Mr. Psycho was in the news. Oh, no. And he is quoted. Oh, what are you doing, computer? It is really taking its time. Um, I was quoted in uh, the Biz West, May 24th. A lot of news coming out. I talked all... I, I met with... Um, uh, was invited to a roundtable with a uh, a bunch of construction industry leaders in northern Colorado. Uh, a lot of people that are doing all, a lot of things that we're doing, building, designing. Scott Rodman was there um, from Rodman Architecture, Sky Castle Builders, and they do a lot, very similar stuff to us, high-end to mid, me, medium housing, multifamily stuff, they're building. Um, and basically, one of, one of the things I said and was quoted on was I said, the writing is on the wall. Especially in Boulder County, said Lance Psycho, co-owner of Longmont-based F9 Productions, Inc. I love open space, but I don't like politicians that speak out of both sides of their mouths about it. We need the open space. We want to protect our agricultural communities. I love that. But then they go, 
We want affordable housing. In Boulder County, we have all of these landlocked cities now. We really have to start saying, yes, in my backyard, a psycho added. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, and then Scott agreed with me um, with that. So basically, you know, the, the wave is coming. The policies are getting set in place. It's going to get more dense. We, there's It just is what it is. Like you can wail and whine about it or you can lean into it and take the stoic approach and go like, okay, how do I carve out my happiness, health, wealth, and all the other stuff in this environment? And I think you gotta, you gotta just lean into it and, and be aware of it and be, pre- and be prepared to like set your firm up in, in those kind of ways, no matter where you're at. Right. Cause we have people listening all over the place, Australia, all that kind of stuff. Like that all, all of these trends are going to be, uh, intertwined like the zeitgeist is there yep I, I want both i want both because people want both meaning i want suburban i i want competition i want lots to be open on the free market i think that a lot of times these new developments outside of the city can actually be be cheaper because you're not dealing with all the government all the nimbyism all the rules all the regulations um so speaking of the uh adu Colorado basically signed that you, you got to allow ADUs, but Longmont, we like to use Longmont because we live here, has now made that ADU process as hard as like, as hard as possible. It's going through site plan review, doing three different reviews for it. it it's actually kind of silly. Um, so we need both because uh, my friends went golfing with them. They're all my age. I'll have either one to... One of, one of my friends has eight kids. Just had another baby. Shout out Joe. Keep going. He's eight? going for he's going for a soccer team. He's going for a soccer team. Wow. What yeah. is a soccer team? Nine. Oh, I'm not European. I don't know. I wanted to say eleven, but that's football. <laughs> I have <laughs> I no like, idea. I think it's ten actually. You should look it up. Okay, yeah, I'm I, it we up, yeah. no idea. Um, but even the ones with kids, they live in uh, Philly and New York, and they they love it. They live 11. in the city. Yeah, they live in the city, and and they love it. Um, I live in the suburbs and I absolutely love it. My uh, whole garage workout garage couch is, is crushing it. Neighbor was over. We were just chilling. It's awesome. You got We got to have diversity for, of housing options. That's that's I think the thing here is like yes, I, we have moved too far in one direction in America where it's like everybody thinks they need their their space. I was driving around. I was driving around with an architectural colleague over this last weekend, and she was appalled at. The, the, some of the developments in Colorado, and I don't blame her. And I go, I go, I go, Jen. What's really interesting about your so basically, I'll describe it. It's it's we have a lot of these houses that are going up on an eighth of an acre lots, like nine thousand square feet or less. They're small, mm-hmm. and they're huge houses, like three or four thousand square feet. So they fill almost the whole lot. Like they're maximizing the lot coverage and everything. These houses are big boxes, and they're right next to each other. They almost have no backyard or anything like that. My wife so hates that too. Yep. So they're on top of each other, right? Yep. Al's is like an old school, older school version of that, but he has space. Backyard. He has space, a backyard, can get some privacy, all that kind of stuff. And I go, Jen, wait till you get to our development where I live now in the condo. And I go, I have more, pri- I have more privacy than these people outdoors wise. And I go, we have something called an up yard. Mm. And I go, it's all about. It's all about good design. It's like, so architects, like we have to start advocating and maybe working with these Yimby groups or starting one in your community and showing examples of like, people get freaked out, the general public, by density and these, you know, townhomes, apartments and stuff. And it's like, I don't, I don't blame you because a lot of times they're bad design, right? But if you do stuff like we're doing, it, like we did with the, with the up yards, like it's inarguable. I have more privacy. I have more outdoor privacy than those people in those big houses for sure. Because like they couldn't sunbathe in their underwear. No, no. <laughs> I did yeah. on Sunday. Yep. Yep. On That's the roof. Funny. Nobody saw me. Yep. That's funny. Yeah. Because they'd be looking down. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. A lot of different. Yeah. We got to do it. Um, what do we got, Al? Transitioning. Here's the, here's the thought for you. Okay. Lance. You and I, mainly you, eh, let's say both of us, okay. we like to complain how, and we know that the government keeps spending, and there's no stopping it. It's just a giveaway culture now. Who can we buy votes from yeah. to, give, to give stuff away? 
Uh, if we want to be as cynical as possible, oh, the Republicans give money away from the rich people so that they can control the population. And all they want to do is get corporations on their side. And then that's what they give away money to. Uh, Democrats, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's college students. It's uh, young people with, with housing. Um, it, it's always just a giveaway money culture, right? Does the Fed need to be the parent and actually crash the economy? the government economy of spending so that rationality can come in. And, and because basically what we were talking about is that the fed can thread the needle, yeah. you know, and I believe that possibly they could, but is it true that government spending is so out of control that literally it can just, it will keep inflation going. It will gum up the system. It could go on forever, technically. Yep. And, and how the Fed is doing this is interest rates. And then also they're not buying the government bonds, right? That's the system that gets created is that the government needs money because they spend it. So they make up these paper pieces of paper called bonds and then they sell them on the free market. And what the free market can't buy up, the Fed would literally hit control P money give that money to the government. The government would give them a piece of electrical paper that says bond and say, we will pay you back the money that you hit control P with plus an interest rate of over what the fed says, right? Uh, you know, five, six, 7%, which is weird because that money was controlled P. So now you need to get more money out of the system, out of the fake money. Yep. Anyways, if the Fed was actually part of a balanced system because the government cannot stop just giving out candy to their side. And if, if this is actually supposed to mean like stability, it means that the government isn't going to learn easily. It's not, you know, it's like a child who keeps running out into the street. Like eventually you have to like spank them. <laughs> like yeah. you cannot do this. Yeah. What everybody should do is they should do If If you don't believe yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting thoughts experiment, right? Because, like, the Fed the Fed was created to, it, it, under the guise of, oh, these crazy laissez-faire capitalists keep crashing the economy because of their crazy spending. That was the guise. That was the, that's, that's the guise we've been told our whole lives, which is, absolute, which is absolutely not true. And it's not true because if you go, if you go on YouTube, just go on YouTube. This, the documentaries are still up. Look up the, the Forgotten Depression. And, and everything surrounding Cal Calvin Coolidge and how he handled all of that. It was the quickest economic recovery ever that nobody talks about because he actually let everything crash like you're saying. So do that that's your homework for the weekend before we sign off here. Go look up the Forgotten Depression. Uh, what are you looking up, Argentina? Oh, I was just looking at if, if Ar Argentina, that president, uh, basically went from a deficit to a surplus in his government in like two months. Just because he just slash cut. Slash did. cut. Yeah. yeah. All that yeah. stuff. So anyway, that's all we got for you. Uh, send us send us some fan mail this summer. There we go. Yeah, give us some questions. Jason Altman, send me an email. LMC at F9productions.com. Whoever else is listening. Send them. Send them. We want to we wanna hear from you. Send us some gifts. All the things. <laughs> Happy first day of summer coming up. If you like this episode, you know what you do. Leave us a positive comment. Like, subscribe. On the YouTube, if you're on iTunes, please leave us a five-star review, and we'll see you next week.